I'm Will Montgomery. I'm the vice chair of the Oversight Committee for CPRIT. Our chairman, Pete Guerin, regrets very much that he was unable to come today. But today we celebrate reaching the halfway point in CPRIT's funding authority and the manifold achievements made possible through that funding. In 2007, Texas Texans overwhelmingly approved the constitutional amendment to create CPRIT and to commit $3 billion dollars to fund and attack cancer in four ways, through research, recruitment, prevention, and product development. With the creation of CPRIT, Texans have made possible the kind of cancer research <clears throat> that can save lives and give those affected by cancer, including families, great comfort and hope. We recognize at CPRIT that we work for you, the citizens of Texas. We have taken on a great responsibility to wisely use the funds that we are given, and we assure you that we take our obligation <clears throat> to the citizens of Texas very seriously. With us today are some of the scientists, public health officials, doctors, and staff that are advancing CPRIT's goals of reducing cancer's devastating burden on the lives of Texans, and ultimately for all those affected by cancer. Also with us and deserving of our great thanks are the staff mem many of the staff members at CPRIT who work tirelessly to accomplish the mission. CPRIT's success isn't measured simply by spending $1.49 billion or invested in cancer research and projects. Ultimately, CPRIT's success is measured by the discoveries, products, and services that are reducing cancer's burden and saving lives. In prevention, lives of Texas, Texans are being saved each day by projects that CPRIT funds. CPRIT has provided 2.8 million prevention and diagnostic services to the citizens of Texas in each of Texas's 254 counties. Those services have helped people like the 60-year-old Hispanic man from the lower Rio Grande Valley with a family history of colon cancer. Despite trying his best, he was unable to save the money for a colonoscopy. When he discovered he was eligible to receive one from CPRIT, he signed up and he is doing very well and has beat his family history. The San Antonio man who was picked out of a crowd at a CPRIT-funded event because a healthcare worker saw that he didn't look well. He was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. <laughs> Thanks to that healthcare worker funded by CPRIT, that man is alive and well and carrying on with his life. In research, our research discoveries, I say our, CPRIT's <laughs> funds have provided research discoveries that are advancing what we know about the disease and are showing great promise for better treatments. For example, CPRIT scholar recruit Dr. Herbert Levine of Rice discovered that lung cancer cells use an evasive trick, an evasive trick <clears throat> to fool T cells from detecting and, and attacking them. That finding may very well lead to a new therapeutic. The scientists who opened the door to cancer immunotherapy, which I think will ultimately be considered one of the greatest medical advances of the century, Jim Allison is now back in Texas, his home, and advancing remarkable treatments for many kinds of cancer thanks to her recruitment grant from CPRIT. And on a personal note, Jim Allison's discoveries saved the life of my great uncle, who is now free of lung cancer. In product development, two CPRIT product development grantees, Apollo Endosurgery and Asurigen, have a device or product on the market to fight cancer right now. 13 more CPRIT supported companies have drugs currently in clinical trials. Each of these shows great promise. These are a very few of the accomplishments that we take great pride in at CPRIT for the citizens of Texas. Thanks to the work of many, many people at institutions and the staff, we Texas today is at the forefront of cancer science. Thank you very much for being here today. I want to turn the podium over 
to the man who has been Secret CEO since November 2013, Wayne Roberts. Thank you very much, Mr. Montgomery. What a wonderful week for Seaprit. What a wonderful week for Texas. I'm going to gamble here and make, try and make a few introductions. Uh, I know some people said they were coming. I don't know if they're going to be here or not. But I'll start off with, uh, besides Mr. Montgomery, we have... Uh, Bill Rice and Dee Margo from our Oversight Committee, if you all would raise your hand or stand up or whatever you wish to do. We also have Mark Watson, uh, who has been on the Oversight Committee. I was hoping Tom Luce was going to be here, but uh, maybe, he'll, maybe he will step in. I also would be remiss in not recognizing Billy Hamilton. Uh, Billy was instrumental in 2013 when I came on board uh, to try and figure out what this wonderful agency does and, and how to keep it going. Tomorrow, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, and today in Central Texas, that's really not meant to be folksy, it's more of a prayer, <laughs> Will Montgomery and our other oversight committee members will make decisions that push our awards from since 2010 to over $1.5 billion, $1.5 billion. Thanks to the vision of Governor Perry and the Texas legislature and the commitment of her citizens, seven years ago this November, Texas embarked on a mission that is uniquely Texan to mitigate a scourge as old as humankind itself. Where else but Texas? What overarches Texas, what overarches Seaport is it is so Texan. From the development of the integrated circuit at Texas Instruments in the 1950s, through the space race at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, to Jim Allison's insight at MD Anderson to unleash the body's immune system against cancer, Texas has always been home to innovative people determined to accomplish what hasn't been done or apparently can't be done. Texans have the can-do spirit, the frontier mentality. At this point, it's fair to ask, what has Texans gotten for their investment in Seaprit? Has Seaprit cured cancer? Scientists make advances by building upon research and the work of others. Developing a promised discovery into a drug to treat patients takes 10 to 15 years and costs at least hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions. But preventions and cures are possible with every advancement. So the answer to the question, when will cancer be cured, is now. Cancer is cured now, one discovery at a time. How is CEPRT advancing these discoveries in Texas? One of the more than 100 preeminent cancer researchers brought to Texas through CEPRT funding discovered that pancreatic tumors consistently shed a protein into the blood. This discovery may lead to early detection of pancreatic cancer through a simple blood test. A CEPRT funded company is developing a cancer therapy that uses human enzymes to starve and kill cancer cells. A CEPRT funded clinical trial tests new radiation technology that may allow higher doses of radiation to be delivered in fewer treatments with fewer negative side effects. These are just three, but all told, Texas is change, CEPRT is changing the face of cancer in Texas. Historically, Texas lags nationally in both cancer research and venture, venture capital investment. At the halfway point, CEPRT is affecting Texas national standings and may well be transformational. Consider these metrics. CEPRT's prevention program, as Will just mentioned, has delivered over 2.8 million prevention services to Texans in all 254 counties. Can CEPRT claim to have saved people's lives? Some will tell you it did. We will claim 
that Siepert gave them a fighting chance to beat what has been called the emperor of all maladies. Nearly 5,600 patients are being treated in the 84 Siepert funded clinical trials, giving hope to those who had none. 4,700 direct real jobs have been created and maintained. And recognizing that most of the 110 star researchers brought to Texas by Siepert will have careers extending some 15 or 30 years, we've already brought over 2,000 future years of research to Texas. They will be Siepert's legacy and Texas's gift to the world. Momentum is what Siepert has at this halfway point. With respect to cancer, Texans can say we are making progress. Since 2010, we've taken Texas farther and faster in this fight. Imagine what will happen in the next five years. In the next 30 minutes, you will hear from three people who will lead us there. To start us off, please welcome Dr. Jim Wilson, our new Chief Scientific Officer. Dr. Wilson. Thank you, Wayne. I am indeed delighted to be here at this milestone event and to think with you about how Texas is going to lead forward in our fight against the suffering associated with cancer. Um, as Mr. Roberts mentioned, I am a new member of the CPERT team, having joined CPERT two months ago following two esteemed cancer researchers, Dr. Al Gilman, the late Dr. Al Gilman, Dr. Margaret Kripke, um, who um, together built CPERT into the second largest funding mechanism for cancer research um, in the nation with a goal of supporting the most innovative research uh, and to accelerating the Texas leadership uh, in making the contribution against this disease. The impact of this infusion of resources has been palpable. Cancer uh, funding to Texas has been nearly doubled. 110 cancer investigators, eminent cancer investigators from across the world have joined Texas universities and cancer research institutes. And CPERT has supported the technology that's critical for these investigators to have an opportunity to take the modern approach to cancer investigation and has uh, helped to build the facilities necessary for providing cancer patients access to the most innovative cancer treatments, such as immunotherapy. As a cancer center um, director recruited to UT Southwestern uh, about the time that CPERT was being conceptualized, my mission at UT Southwestern was to harness the scientific prowess of that institution and focus it on cancer research and cancer treatment. And our goal at that time was to build a National Cancer Institute designated Comprehensive Cancer Center. Why? Because the NCI Comprehensive Cancer Centers are the nation's vanguards for cancer research and moving that cancer research to impact on patients in their communities. Uh, at the time, only MD Anderson was a comprehensive cancer center in Texas, but with CPERT support, our progress at UT Southwestern was accelerated, and indeed, uh, fueled by CPERT, the progress at the, uh, the Duncan uh, Cancer Center at Baylor College of Medicine was equally accelerated, and this summer, both UT Southwestern and Baylor became recognized as National Cancer Institute designated comprehensive cancer centers in large part because of the accelerated opportunities that CPERT provided both institutions. And so Texas now has three comprehensive cancer centers. In additional notable accomplishments of uh, CPERT has been the ability to catalyze through its funding mechanisms teams, dream teams of scientific experts from across Texas with complementary expertise to actually focus on cancers of great importance to Texans uh, in a cooperative way, not a competitive way, to deal with childhood cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, for example. 
And these teams are making enormous progress uh, in, again, bringing together, leveraging their complementary expertise. And today, uh, after our presentations, you'll have an opportunity to visit with Dr. Uh, Suzanne uh, Blaney, the Deputy Director for the Texas Children's Cancer Center and Professor of uh, Pediatrics at Baylor College of Medicine, who leads our uh, Childhood Cancer Advisory Committee and can speak to the impact that CPRT has had on catalyzing childhood cancer uh, research prowess in Texas, something that we're all extremely proud of. Um, in the next slide, I have an opportunity to introduce two of the 110 scientific stars that uh, Mr. Roberts mentioned to you as recruited to Texas as CPRT scholars. Dr. Um, Raghu Kalari uh, came to MD Anderson from Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center, and his work has uh, made enormous uh, progress in understanding one of the most uh, devastating diseases facing uh, our current population, and that's pancreatic cancer. And most notable is the opportunity to diagnose that cancer early through uh, innovations that he has discovered and championed. Um, Dr. Cassian Yi, recruited from uh, the Fred Hutchinson's Cancer Center in Seattle to MD Anderson to lead clinical research in the application of innovative trials uh, using immunotherapy. And as you'll learn from uh, Dr. Yi, his research has already progressed to clinical trials that are now offering Texans opportunity to participate in this most amazing and, uh, and promising new therapy. Next slide. So as we look forward to what's ahead in the next five years, uh, Texas cancer researchers are leading in important areas of promise for making an impact in cancer research and treatment. The pre uh, the uh, precision medicine revolution where we're identifying the targets through genomic uh, characterizations of individual patients' tumors and using that information to direct specific or precise therapeutics against those tumors. Texans are taking the lead in this effort in lung cancer, in kidney cancer, and in melanoma with the promise of individual patients benefiting by more precise treatment that's more successful, less toxic, and leading to longer lives and more productive lives. The precision medicine revolution is also having an impact on our ability to discover cancer earlier, as mentioned as example in Dr. Kaluri's uh, studies with respect to early diagnosis of pancreas cancer. And un, uh, uh, absolutely um, uh, clear that one of the most amazing promises in cancer therapy to come, as Mr. Uh, Roberts mentioned, in the last century has been immunotherapy. And the, realizing the promise of immunotherapy is really going to be something that Texans are leading, as evidenced again by the research work that Dr. Yi and his colleagues at MD Anderson are pursuing. Now, all of this groundbreaking science uh, has its most important impact when we can move it from the research lab to impact on patients. And part of the secret portfolio to um, accomplish this mission is in our product development area, and I'm very pleased now to have an opportunity to turn the microphone over to my colleague, Dr. Michael Lang, who is the uh, CPERT Chief Product Development Officer, to talk about CPERT's progress and plans for moving scientific discovery into practical applications for patients. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Um, you said it very well. We are in a revolution of cancer, uh, new cancer discoveries. Uh, the precision medicine uh, discoveries that, uh, that Dr. Wilson alluded to are revolutionizing cancer care. You know, historically, the biggest reductions in or the biggest improvements in cancer outcomes have come through lifestyle changes and screening, 
but that's really changing now. Molecular diagnostics, immunotherapies are, are among the most noteworthy of these new, uh, new technologies that are again revolutionizing cancer care. As Dr. Wilson mentioned, these are wonderful discoveries, but they don't have patient impact until they're, they're, they're configured into a product. And that's the product development process. And we, CPRT, are very pleased to work with uh, 28 different great companies that are all uh, participating in this process. I argue that the process of developing a new cancer drug is probably the most complex process that humans do on a regular basis. It's a, it takes forever. I mean, it's a 10, 12, 15 year process. It's very expensive. Um, it's, you know, there's, there's attrition throughout the process as, as projects move or product project moves from stage to stage. It's a very exceedingly complex uh, process. Um, and, and it's a very interactive process. You know, football and baseball are team sports. This is a multi-team sport. As, as the process moves through the different stages, it, it kind of gets handed off to different groups. It starts in research with the, uh, the academic uh, researchers uh, that, are, that are making these great scientific discoveries, often then transitioned into a company environment where the company will do product development. And in clinical trials, and you know, pro- manufacturing and clinical trials are subcontracted to specialty service providers. And these clinical studies are conducted sometimes in the same typical academic medical centers that were that the that were the sources of these discoveries and then finally it has to go through an FDA approval process so it's a very tedious complex process and uh, we're very pleased to be a, a participant in this and to have, have the opportunity to uh, to provide awards to a number of great companies that are in the in the midst of this process um, so um, and in summary, um, our CPRT product development program has, has made 28 grants to date, a uh, total of uh, over $200 million, um, and the vast majority of them are in the therapeutics area. Obviously, that's where the greatest, uh, greatest advances are occurring today. Um, and I think the, the real proof of the pudding, you know, we can talk about the inputs, how much, you know, CPRT, you know, invested in this or that, but to me, the real proof of our impact is in the outputs. Well, one output is follow-on funding. So we've got, you know, these various companies that are in various phases of this process. These companies have attracted over a billion dollars in follow-on funding, the vast majority of that from private investors, venture capital groups or corporate partners, et cetera. So obviously they're investing for a purely economic reason. They're, you know, they wouldn't be doing that if they didn't believe in the successes that these companies were having. So I think that's a, a very significant um, uh, you know, uh, testament to our success. Um, wh- one of the numbers that for some reason didn't get captured here is, is our clinical studies. I think uh, Wayne mentioned that earlier. We have 13 active clinical studies underway in addition to the products that have been brought into the market already. So again, I think that's uh, a, a significant output of our product development process, again, as affected through our portfolio companies. Um, when we break here after, the, after these discussions, uh, any of you have the opportunities to ask further questions. We're very pleased today to have representatives of three of our companies here. Uh, Dr. Gary Latham from Assurigen, they're a leader in the molecular diagnostic technologies. Uh, They're one of the companies that was mentioned that is already providing their unique diagnostic uh, technology in the market. And two other uh, folks that we work with uh, from therapeutic companies, Dr. Paul Lammers from Myrna and Dr. Andrew Brenner uh, from uh, NanoTX. So again, both uh, both leaders in their respective therapeutics field. So um, that's a quick overview of the uh, CPRIT product development process and, uh, and, and program, and I'm pleased to introduce my colleague, Dr. Becky Garcia, who will talk about our prevention program. Thanks, Mike, and good afternoon. Well, the progress that we're seeing in research and product development is really exciting. Uh, We've heard there are better, more targeted treatments. Some people are cured of their disease, and others are living a whole lot longer with their disease. And so CPRT's efforts are all about accelerating that progress because too many people are still dying. (laughs) Here we go. 
So it is estimated that this year alone, over 39,500 Texans will lose their lives to cancer. That's about 108 people a day. So what if we could cut that number in half? Well, it is possible. It is possible through prevention because it's estimated that 50% of cancers could be prevented simply by more broadly applying the prevention interventions that we have today and that we know work. So if we just look at lung cancer, for example, not smoking could prevent 30% of all cancers and 80% of lung cancers. So it's not just the um, human costs, it's also the economic costs. It's, uh, according to a Perryman report, estimated that every dollar we spend in prevention and screening would equal a savings of about $22 to the healthcare system. So our goal in the prevention program is to get as many of these prevention services out to as many people as possible, moving as quickly as possible, and focusing on those people at greatest need. So our program is roughly 10% of CPRIT funding, and the projects that we are funding are really reporting some impressive results. As you've heard, to date, we have offered 2.8 million services across the entire state of Texas, touching every one of the 254 counties. So our grantees are really doing some amazing work. There have been over 1.3 million education and training services for both public and professionals. 1.5 million clinical services provided, and those services include screenings and, and diagnostics for breast, cervical, and colorectal cancer, vaccinations, tobacco cessation services, genetic testing and counseling, and survivorship services. So one of our grantees who is here today is really contributing to some of these um, impressive results. His projects are in 22 counties, a lot of them very rural and underserved counties. And to date, he's provided almost 30,000 screening and diagnostics for breast and colorectal cancer. That's in addition to thousands more services for education and navigation. And these are for people who really don't have other options. And not only that, Dr. Argenbright was also able to take his secret grant and leverage that into a larger federal grant. And through that grant was able to acquire an 18-wheeler, turn that into a mobile clinic, and that is really extending the reach of a lot of his services. So he's here today and can tell us more about just how he's able to accomplish all of those things. And so I'm happy to report that we are, as we've said, in every county of the state. This map is just a map of our current projects, the ones that are currently active. Um, and it shows also the density of the projects in those counties. This map, there are two counties that are not covered, but they have been covered in the past by other projects. So the good news is um, we are seeing steadily declining mortality rates. And this is because of the efforts of everyone throughout the state and the result of more prevention, of better treatments, of better detection. So if we look at where we were in 2008 compared to the latest data that we have available, which is from 2013, we've seen a drop in the death rates of 13%. And so that translates to approximately 3,300 deaths that were averted. So we're moving in the right direction, but we have a lot more work to do. So those are the statistics but these are some of the faces and these are some of the people that our programs have helped. People who have a better chance of survival because of early detection. 
people who now know their genetic risk and can do something about it, young women like this one who can now plan for the future if they want to have children, people who couldn't afford to travel for services, uh, but a mobile clinic came to them, and then we have the stories of many others like them, and we have stories like this on our website. We welcome you to visit them and learn more about them. Uh, and now, uh, with that, I would like to introduce Mr. Cam Scott. Uh, he's the Senior Director for Texas Government Relations with the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Um, the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network is the advocacy affiliate of the American Cancer Society, and our mission is to support public policy that will advance the fight against cancer, to support cancer patients and their families, and we see CPRIT as a vital partner in this fight. We don't receive any funds from CPRIT, so we are not we don't benefit from it directly, but uh, we benefit uh, we see the benefit that CPRIT has for our state, and uh, we have a number of partners that we work with in our advocacy efforts who are also uh, collectively out there talking about the good work of CPRIT. And I wanted to share with you today, uh, just before last session, our organization commissioned a poll of Texas voters, and this was conducted by Public Opinion Strategies. It's a scientific poll of Texas voters, and we found some really positive uh, senses out there of the voters about CPRIT. You know, one of the questions that is unresolved is what happens to CPRIT in the future? And so we posed the question uh, after the 10 years of the initial funding that's been provided for CPRIT, we asked, do you think it is more important to continue funding the cancer research and prevention work that the Cancer Prevention and Research Institute of Texas is doing through state tax dollars or more important to end the program to save taxpayer dollars. A full 70% of the respondents said it's more important to continue funding cancer research and prevention, and only 17% said it's more important to end the program to save tax dollars, and then there was a 13% that responded didn't, don't know. Uh, we felt that that was a, a really strong showing, and when it was broken down among parties and ideologies, the support was all the way across. Uh, so this is not a partisan thing. Cancer affects Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Tea Partiers, Libertarians, every, every stripe out there. Um, all of us know someone. We also asked a question about the leadership role that this gives Texas. We said, thinking about cancer specifically, how important do you think it is for Texas to remain a national leader in cancer research and prevention by providing state funds for the Cancer Prevention and Research Institute of Texas. Very important, somewhat important, not very important, or not at all important. Um, if you add the somewhat important and the very important, the total is 89%. 89% of Texas voters think it is important for Texas to remain a leader uh, by continuing to fund CPRIT. Um, and only 4% said not at all important, and 5% said not very important. So the mission of CPRIT is something the vast majority of Texans embrace. The work of CPRIT is something that is uh, fantastic to see as a representative of the American Cancer Society and the Cancer Action Network, but also as a Texan. It inspires pride and it, expi it inspires um, hope. Um, even just in the last week, one of my former pastors um, passed away of cancer at a far too young age. Um, we, it's, it seems like a week doesn't go by without hearing about another person. And this is something we can lick, and it's uh, fantastic that Texas is taking a lead on this. And so I just want to um, thank the folks at CPRIT for the good work that they're doing and uh, celebrate with you this milestone of reaching the halfway point.